This video is sponsored by Discord. So one of my favorite movies of all times is The Last Samurai. A lot of people conflate that movie as saying it's like a white man being the face of samurai, but really it's this epic movie about a character who has a lot of inner demons with fantastic hair. He's actually an alcoholic, he has PTSD, and he finds peace when he adopts the code of Bushido, when he's in the mix of the samurai who are rebelling against the imperialists in Japan and the arrival of Western culture in Japan. And he actually finds a lot of solace in the more traditional ways. In one very powerful scene, the head of the samurai, Katsumoto. He's having a very roundabout conversation with Captain Ogren, at which point Ogren is starting to get frustrated. And then he says, life in every breath, that is Bushido, the way of the samurai. And as Ogren learns to meditate with the samurai, to train with them, to develop a respect for the culture and the sense of oneness that that movie has with nature, it almost seems as if he discovers a more truthful expression of himself. As someone who identifies as an artist and who often struggles with coming up with ideas, I really have loved this concept concept of Bushido, even though I didn't really understand it that well. Because I like the idea of just living really in the present, living in the way with the capital W, and then allowing life and my life's work to just express itself naturally. In a culture that's obsessed with hustle, and especially, you know, in this niche on YouTube that is so driven with productivity apps and extensions and how to do things on your calendar. I mean, those tools are useful. I enjoy them myself, but it also is nice to just throw them away and then just to live. And so I recently read this book, Hagakure. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. It's a very old book that talks about the precepts of the samurai. It's one of the most badass books I've read in recent times. And in today's video, I wanna go over seven of my favorite ideas, seven of my favorite sections from that book. I found it to not have any tactical advice, but that peaceful, expressive, violent energy of the samurai. Since reading that book, I can sort of feel its energy emanating in how I'm living this day. And it's a great feeling. So here are seven ideas from Hagakure. And the first idea is this, don't try to arrive at any point, instead live in the way. And here's what the author says on this. It is unwise to be fixated on any single point of completion. A person who has sort of devoted themselves to their studies will think that they have arrived at some point. You might think that getting to a certain conclusion means arrival, completion. But in truth, the best way to live life is to never arrive. Never assume arrival, never assume completion. Devotion to the study of one's path, first acquiring fundamentals, and then continually refining your knowledge and skills is a lifelong pursuit with no end. Without becoming content with your level of accomplishment, think critically of everything and spend your entire life traveling the path, asking how can I find the truth of the way? Never give up the question. Continue to practice like this and you will uncover the way. This is kind of an embarrassing confession, but it's something that I've been telling Thomas a lot over the last few days. I've started reading fiction at night and putting my cell phone away from me so that I can fall asleep better because I'm trying to recalibrate my sleep schedule and like for the first time in my life, trying to become an early riser. And the book I've been reading is Shantaram or Shantaram. I'm not gonna go into the plot of the book, but it is this big epic. And even though I'm not far into the book, like really not far at all, I can feel that world and just my mind as it naturally works, I am seeing like the images of that world, the color palette of it, the reds, the oranges, and the blues. And I've now had this newfound desire as desires just tend to crop up to like direct a mini series covering that book. And even as I go for runs or start working out, the songs I'm listening to are of that world. So much so that this fantasy has now become like this thing that I feel myself re-motivated in life by. And I was telling Thomas, like, this is what we want to go for now. Like, this is the new aim. I want to arrive at this moment. I was really feeling stuck, like, looking at this vision. I've been here a few times where I've been so excited about just an idea, an idea that's, like, you know, impossible in some ways. And it was only when I came back to read Hagakure that I realized, hey, like, this is awesome. And it's awesome that I have this desire and this ambition, just in terms of energizing my day-to-day -day life and motivating me. But that's not the point that I'm trying to arrive at. Instead, it's better to just have that as something that inspires me, but then continue to live today in a way. I think it also means that we need to do a genre series on Shantaram. There is no point in one's training in which one reaches the end. The instant you think you have finished, you have already strayed from the path. Realize that nothing you do is perfect until you have taken your last breath. Then, when you are dead, you will have been seen as completed the way. Purity without excess and focusing single-mindedly on one thing is difficult to achieve during one's lifetime. But if the purity of your training is diluted, then it cannot be called the proper way. Strive to follow the way of service and samurai-hood as your singular pursuit. The second idea is this. Put will in every moment. Throw your heart into this moment. It ties really closely to the first idea, but if you have things on your docket, on your life timeline, that you think are contingent on your happiness, consciously detach yourself from that and instead say, hey, life's purpose, life's 
Beauty is right now. And what I have to do is throw myself into this moment. And in doing so, you create magic today. You create beauty and meaning today. And that's sort of what I internalize as living in the way. How should one reply when asked, what is the most important thing to aspire to in one's training? Let me try to answer. Pure will in every moment. When one is pure in heart, a vivacious expression appears on one's face. Something special manifests in one's heart when completely sincere in one's undertakings. If this is directed at one's lord, it is loyalty and filial piety to one's parents or valor in war. It is applicable to all things. It is hard to find this special thing and it is even more difficult to hold on to what you have when you have it. The only approach is to throw your heart into the moment now. I mean, how do you feel? I feel fantastic. Yeah, it's been great. I've been incredibly angry. So angry. We've done some bad things this week. Dude, I'm just thinking, how do we keep this up? You know, like, how do we hold each other accountable and like maybe generate a community that can talk about these unsavory topics without the YouTube algorithm kind of getting in the way? Where could we do that? So I set up a Discord server. You did. We need a place where we can hold each other accountable and just hold each other. Accountable. Accountable. Account accountable. Yeah, no, and also it's just a place where we could interact with the community at large. Yeah, no, it, it'll be awesome. Your fans can click the link in the description to get the invites and join. Yeah, yeah, they can click the link in the description and join my Discord server. And we can talk about other things. We can talk about filmmaking, editing, productivity. I'm gonna have you go in and like uh, run some stuff, you know, like keep things going. But I'm definitely gonna be in there all the time because I'm addicted to the community. Like, that's why I heart all the comments. Like, yeah. I love my community. Sinbad community is the best community in the world. It's also really easy to set up a Discord account. You just go to the site, download the app, and sign up. It takes less than five minutes. It's like literally like hanging out with your friends. It's our community. We can just have a chat. Yeah. And th that way, like, it just is a tighter squad and we can just guarantee that greatness is coming. Thank you to Discord for sponsoring this video and thank you all for watching. Idea three is kind of funny, but the book comes back to this point like several times, and that is to put effort into your appearance and your grooming. Until 50 or 60 years ago, every morning, samurai would diligently groom themselves by bathing in the open air, shaving their foreheads, putting fragrant oil in their hair, cutting their fingernails, and filing them with a pumice stone. Military equipment was kept neat, dusted, and oiled to be free of rust. And although paying so much attention to one's personal appearance is kind of time consuming, and I think that's one of the reasons why I would say my grooming has never been that great. I think growing up until now, I have allowed myself to be a little sloppy in my appearance, like letting long periods go between haircuts, letting the facial hair get unkempt. At times, my toenails have looked disgusting. Up until three weeks ago, I've never worn matching socks. I mean, I have been unkempt in many ways, but I have realized that it affects me, maybe even like on a subconscious level, to be unkempt. And I'm now really interested in changing that. I've been more diligent with getting haircuts. I'm sort of trying to get into fashion, I mean, not to an Ali Abdal level, but I think I'm going to spend a little time deciding on what I consciously want my look to be. I mean, this is a shirt that I bought like, 10 years ago. And according to the book, the samurai's mindset for their appearance and paying attention to their appearance repeated many times in the, about how important it is to present yourself well in a polished way was that the samurai were always preparing for their death. And they wanted to make sure essentially that when they died, they looked proper. <laughs> they were like ready for that day. If slain with an unkempt appearance, it shows a lack of forethought regarding his fate. That's what the book says. And he will be scorned by his enemy as being unclean. That is why young and old alike should always pay attention to matters of personal grooming. It may seem bothersome and time consuming, but this is precisely the kind of care a samurai should take in his daily life. The next point is a very simple one and a quick one, but it's on alcohol and how the samurai were very disciplined when it came to alcohol. They would allow themselves to indulge in it, but never to the point of excess. And they always had a tremendous amount of respect for alcohol. I've actually made it now 15 days without drinking any alcohol. I think over the course of the winter and things still being in lockdown, down. And even when doing things like the director series where we would often need to like shoot in bars and I would just order something to allow us to be in that space. I'd found myself drinking more than I originally intended. And just over the last four or five months, I think I've developed like a greater habit of drinking alcohol than I originally set out to. And I wanted to sort of course correct it. And just taking a little bit of a break from alcohol so far has made like a very decent difference in my mental health, my ability to sleep well, and even I think the way my skin is looking. The book says this, many men are defeated by alcohol. This is a lamentable fact. Be attentive to how much you can imbibe without becoming drunk and do not exceed your limit. Drinking is a communal activity, so be very careful of your public appearance. The fifth point is on rain, which is kind of a bizarre point to bring up, but the line is so beautiful, I just wanna read it outright. There is a lesson to be learned from a downpour of rain. 
If you get caught in a sudden cloudburst, you will still get a drenching even though you try to keep dry by hurrying along and taking cover under overhangs of roofs. But if you are prepared to get wet from the start, the result is still the same, but it is no hardship. This attitude can be applied to all things. Which is to say, there's so many times where I'm just grumpy about things not going really well. Like it can be as simple as I wanted to film a video and the camera battery was like almost dead. Or I wanted to go drive, but I realized I'm out of gas and I need to like take the extra eight minutes to go fill up gas. It sounds stupid, but I would just find myself getting frustrated because I'm like, oh, the world is against me. But the downpourings of rain are always gonna come. So you might as well learn to just accept getting wet. And if you're prepared to get wet from the start, then you'll just have a much better experience of all things. Point number six is incredibly badass, probably hard to implement, but it's just the most samurai bushido thing there is. And it is stop calculating, embrace your death. A calculating man is a coward. This is because he considers everything from the perspective of loss and gain. And his mind never deviates from this track. To him, death is a loss and life is a gain. He is afraid of death and that is why he is a disgrace. The book says you should do the exact opposite. You should seek out death. Bushido is to enter a death frenzy. Even dozens of men cannot kill a man in a frenzied state, already determined to die. One cannot accomplish great exploits in a normal frame of mind. Just become insane and desperate to die. Okay, I think this is poetic language, okay? I hope no one is um, getting any ideas from this point. In the way of the warrior, contemplating matters too deeply will cause you to fall behind others. Just enter a frenzy to perish. Loyalty and filial piety will manifest as a matter of course in the death frenzy. My interpretation of this very violent language is that you shouldn't think as much. It's just stop thinking so much, stop calculating so much. Like on camera, I sound really put together, but off camera, Thomas and I just say really vile things, especially about death and killing to each other is just how we talk and motivate each other. I wish I could keep that. <laughs> and I like the idea of just entering the frenzy, especially when we're out on a shoot and it gets hard. One shoot, it was like a massive snowstorm and we were just running in the middle of the snow. And I was like, why are we doing this? It's because we were in a frenzy. But I got to tell you, running in the middle of a snowstorm, no one's telling you you have to. You just do it because you're in that frenzy. It's like the most invigorating feeling there is. And I want more of it. I want to stop calculating and I want to embrace my death. I think it makes you a better artist. Because ultimately in the grand scheme of all that we try to do and all that we think about in life, I mean, how many of the variables can we actually control? Very few by comparison. So it's better to just live and do than contemplate. Just tell your mind to shut up and just do what you gotta do. And the final point is this, nothing is impossible. With single-minded resolve, heaven and earth can be moved as one pleases. There's nothing that cannot be achieved. A man or woman's fecklessness prevents her from making up her mind. Effortlessly moving heaven and earth can be accomplished through sheer single-minded determination. Nothing to add to that, but I do like these reminders that it's all possible. And that's all the points that I really love from this book, Hagakure. If you're looking for some philosophical motivation, I would definitely recommend checking it out. It was a great read. If you're new to this channel, my name is Nikhil. This channel is a combination between comedy sketches and more genuine videos like this one with topics in mind for the creative entrepreneur. I know it's a funky combo, but that is what this channel is all about. So if that's something that appeals to you, consider subscribing. I also just recently launched a course on how you can grow a YouTube channel to 100,000 subscribers in a year. It's $15 and 50 minutes long. So far, the reviews that have been coming in are all incredibly positive. So you can check that out as well if you're interested. But with that being said, for those of us who are willing to enter the death frenzy, philosophically, to live in the way, to not contemplate so much, to be one with the rain, to, you know, hold back the alcohol, to us I say, greatness is coming. Cheers.